So I've now added the NTS1 to the setup here. This is gonna be our little uh, external synth. Now, the NTS-1 is, I think, by far the most value for money, <laughs> a little like compact $100 powerhouse you can buy on the market today. It's just insane all the stuff this thing could do uh, for its low price. Now, um, that said, it has some downsides such as the build quality is about the worst it can get, um, and so it's not very rugged. But for a little desktop, uh, you know, set up like this, it's great. All the ports on it are pretty fragile. You really do have to baby this thing. Um, I've gone through one already, which thankfully Korg replaced under warranty, but yeah, the ports on these things do break. Um, so it's definitely not withstanding the rigors of, uh, you know, of travel. But um, that said, for what it can do, it's amazing. So uh, the NTS-1 I have here, um, I have it set to MIDI channel number 16. So the way you change the MIDI channel on this, you have to like go into the special boot menu and it's all in hex uh, instead of like showing numbers, which is really annoying. And so I found putting this on MIDI channel 16 means I could just scroll to the very final slot, which I think displays as F, and I know that that's number 16. So that's the way I solve that problem. Um, but you can choose whatever MIDI channel you want. So now I'm coming out of the, um, the MIDI out port on here, right? I'm still using my headphone splitter and I'm using one of them going to the NTS-1. Now I don't really need this headphone splitter right here, I'm just leaving it kind of to demonstrate. I still have a second MIDI output to use on some other uh, synth if I wanted to, right? Right now I'm not using it, but I could. You may also be tempted to use one of these star shaped out uh, things, and I found that they don't actually work. Um, I, I would say if you're gonna do this setup two is kind of the max in terms of splitting uh, your MIDI signal out to two different things. If you try to go into three, four, five, the signal starts to get too weak and it probably won't work. So at that point, if you want to send out to more than two things, at that point, you're probably gonna have to buy an actual MIDI splitter. But you know, just to get started, one of these things for five bucks is such a great way to go. So that's a standard um, TRS MIDI cable that these both use. Um, this also has a type A input, so I have it on the standard output here. If you had a type B synth, uh, you can go into your model samples MIDI a menu and change it to inverted. Inverted is uh, type B. And so that's really helpful if you happen to have uh, a type B input synth. So um, we're good there. Again, USB powered. So the NTS-1 does actually have significant problems with um, ground loop. And so putting it on its own dedicated battery is great. Um, it just totally solves all the ground loop problems. So currently I have this battery powering the NTS-1 and my little drum pad thing here. And the other battery is powering the other two things and that works fine. I've tried, if you did this entire setup where all of these things are powered off a single battery, you would get ground loop noise out of this. I've, I've uh, tested that. And so it's just easier to have it on two separate batteries. Now I'm taking my model samples audio output uh, stereo into the input on the NTS-1, and then I'm taking the NTS-1 output also stereo into my recording device. Um, so in doing this setup, I've, uh, I've lost the ability to do audio over USB, right? By itself, the model samples can actually record audio over USB directly into a computer, which is super nice. The NTS-1 cannot do that. Uh, so I do need to have an actual analog audio recorder of some sense, you know, in this case, I'm using uh, one of these little digital audio recorders, but you can also use um, an audio interface into a computer, um, whatever you want. The way that I've done this, I'm routing all of my sound from the model samples through the NTS-1, which means that I can use this as a global effects processor. So let's play my pattern again, and I will just start adding some effects. Oh, let's unmute things. I love this, this grit delay so much and I, I totally overuse it. Um, 
but uh, so that's kind of demonstrating just the, the NTS-1 applying global effects to whatever sound you're setting out of the, the model samples. Um, works great for that. Um, and by the way, uh, you can change the, the wet dry on this, right? So for example, I think you hold wh whichever one you're on and then, so this is wet and then this is dry. So let me just kind of demonstrate that. By default, it's 50-50. Hundred percent wet. So now we're only hearing this, whatever this effect does. Or hundred percent dry. This effect is now doing nothing at all. We're just hearing the signal from here straight passing through. So just to point out, you have a lot of options there. Um, you have three layers of effects that you can add, uh, your mod effect, delay, and reverb, and then those are all expandable with Logue SDK software. Basically, you can download software to add on to here. It's kind of like a plugin, um, and it allows it to do new things. You can load new effects on there, right? Um, and that is super, super cool. You also have an oscillator. It's also a synth. So um, the way I like to use this is I will have my external synth be on track six, and if I had two external synths, they'd be on tracks six and five, right? It's just my, my convention. So um, right now, I've got the key step is still sending to this synth track, right? And when I play it, nothing happens. Let's turn off this delay effect here. We'll leave the reverb on now, because why not? So this is just this synth sound running through this reverb, okay? But I wanna hear this synth sound as well. So a couple ways I can do that. One, uh, as I mentioned before, I have the NTS-1 set to channel 16, so I can go here on my key step, change to channel 16, and now we're hearing whatever synth this is. Let's get something a little more pleasant. I like this poly squares one a lot. Okay, so just pointing out, again, the MIDI path here, my notes are going through the model samples and then out to the NTS-1. So they're just, uh, the model samples is just passing the signal on, right? And to make sure that that's working properly, we'll go into the MIDI menu here, go into our uh, ports, and my out, so on the one of these options here, it says um, out slash through. So my MIDI out port, do I want it to be in MIDI out mode or MIDI through mode? At the moment, it's on MIDI through. That means whatever signal comes in, it just makes an exact copy and spits it back out. So that's what allows me to play the key step through the model samples onto the NTS-1. NTS-1, being a synth, does respond to pitch bend, which is great. Uh, mod wheel. Again, mod wheel, I think I would have to map it custom to make that work, so currently it's doing nothing. But now let's talk about the MIDI out mode. So MIDI through is pretty basic and then it's just whatever signal comes in, it spits it back out. So it lets you bypass the model samples effectively, right? Um, it is still taking the model samples clock though. So in the NTS-1, kind of the only way that the clock is affected is on the arpeggiator. So I'll just show that real quick. So if I latch the arpeggiator, So I have my own. So the arpeggiator has its own tempo right now. It's not receiving a tempo. But if I sent clock from here, and let's turn that off, okay. So if I sent clock from here, and I turn this on, and now let's play a note uh, from here. Okay, so now the NTS-1 is playing its internal, uh, its internal ARP. And now notice these change. These change to time divisions of whatever tempo it's receiving. Now stop. Okay. So that's actually really flexible. You can have the NTS-1 have its own internal clock, uh, and so you can have your ARP be free running and not sync to everything else, or you can have the ARP be um, synced to the rest of your tempo and be a multiple of that, um, or a division of that, which is really cool. So um, the ARP on this is actually very powerful. You can also change your ARP shape, right? So let me just play something else. All right, minor chord. Oops, all right, let's just turn it on latch. Change 
change the ARP range. Okay, so actually, the, yeah, the ARP on here is actually pretty full featured um, and it, it can do a lot, it's cool. So a uh, little tangent there, but um, let's look back at the out slash through mode on the model samples. Let's say I want the model samples um, to sequence or send a, se a MIDI sequence to the NTS-1. Well, we can definitely do that, um, but we have to switch it to out mode. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'm now in MIDI out mode. That means that whatever um, MIDI signals are coming from the internal sequencer here get sent out to whatever's downstream, in this case, the NTS-1. But that also means that I can now no longer play the NTS-1 from this keyboard. Even though I'm still on channel 16, nothing happens because the model samples is receiving that note and saying, well, none of my internal sequencers are using channel 16, so I'm just gonna ignore it. It's no longer sending it back out here. Um, and that is, Again, good or bad, depending on what your goals are. Now, ideally, the model samples in a future firmware will get an out plus through mode or an out and through mode where it does both things simultaneously. That would be ideal in my opinion. Um, but uh, currently it does not do that. You have to pick one or the other. And so that means I no longer can use this. However, um, I can still use this to control these tracks. So for example, I want it to be on six. So I'm gonna change to MIDI channel six. So I'm now hearing this sound. Okay, so now do I have, yeah. I, well, I already have a sequence in there, but um, if I wanted to use this to record a new sequence, I could. So let's do that. I'm gonna mute everything else. All right, so now uh, track six is going to be sending a sequence. Now, I play it. We're only hearing the sound on track six right now. We're not hearing the NTS-1. Uh, a couple reasons for that. One, uh, track six is set to send by default on MIDI channel number six, and we need to change that. So go to our out channels, and so by default, again, it's just one through six. Um, looks like I already have some of them changed. So my track six, I wanna send out to channel number 16, because that's what the nts one's listening on. So I press that, I choose it, I press play. I still hear nothing, what's going on? Well, the other little gotcha with this um, is that you have to go into the track setup menu, which is function tracked or shift tracked, and then this option here, the second one down, that says M out, that's MIDI out. You can think of that as like a mute for the MIDI output. So right now, it's turned off, which means that it is not sending MIDI out from this track. All right, so we're only hearing the sounds that are on this track. I turn it on. Now we're hearing both. All right. So I'm hearing both this sound from the model samples and the sound from the NTS-1 layered on top of each other. And this is actually pretty useful because you can use it as a mute, right? I can use this to selectively bring in and out the second layer of my sound when I want to. Oops. No. Likewise, let's say I wanted to hear only the NTS-1. Well, I just turn the volume on this track all the way down. Easy enough. Bring it back in. The other way to change the volume per track, if this is up, is on the main, the main screen here. Um, if you click in on the encoder, that is now changing my level for the track. So level and, volumes, level and volume are basically the same thing. Um, the difference here is that this volume, when you go above 100, it gets into a distortion circuit. So it's kind of like volume plus overdrive, whereas this one is purely just the level, the volume of the track. So it's really nice actually to have both of those. So if you want to overdrive one, but not have it be crazy loud, you can turn this way up and then turn this down a bit and it sounds good. Now you may be hearing the NTS-1 synth is pretty loud in the mix, and unfortunately, uh, there is no level control for the NTS-1 synth engine. Um, 
so just like I demonstrated here where I have a separate volume and level controls, I don't have that here on the NTS-1, and that's, that's definitely uh, my biggest gripe about it. Um, what I do have is a filter, and so I can use the filter to tamp down some of the frequencies, but that's not the same as volume, right? A lot of different filter modes so that's low pass um, band pass so like band pass is super useful if I want the NTS one just to have a certain little you know certain little uh, section of the frequency okay so um, I think the NTS-1 is a particularly good pairing with the model samples because this synth engine is monophonic and each of these tracks is monophonic. So I can just send a single track to the synth and like it just makes sense. Everything's monophonic. It's also you know very affordable and just kind of like a nice a nice little companion. The connections are super easy. Like it just it all works very well together. The point at which um, you kind of lose some ability is this is great for sending MIDI note sequences. Uh, the model, or sorry, the, the NTS-1 can also listen to MIDI CC sequences, meaning all of these knobs and little parameters I'm changing, you can sequence those via MIDI CC. However, the model samples doesn't have uh, kind of enough flexibility to really make that a realistic process. Now, the model samples will send MIDI CC from each one of these knobs. And that's an option here in, back in your MIDI menus. Um, there's the filter menu. You can tell it um, the encoders, e, uh, ENCS, do I want them to be internal plus external, uh, meaning it's both affecting the internal sounds and sending out to the external, or do I want them to be one or the other, only internal, or I guess it just, yeah, it does, only internal or both, those are the options. So um, you can actually send many CC values from these knobs out to another synth, but they are hard-coded, which means that your other synth has to be able to let you pick and choose what those CC values do. In case the NTS-1, it doesn't, because they're also hard-coded. So if there happens to be one that matches up, like let's say it's CC value 40, and you know I turn this and it sends CC value 40, and that happens to be exactly what you want in this, then great. But chances are they're not gonna line up that well. Um, so in this sense, if, if you're looking for a way of doing like complex um, modulation uh, sequencing, this particular pairing isn't going to work so well for that. You're going to have to step up to the next level um, of electron boxes or maybe a next level of synth that lets you really customize things. So that's something we'll get into in future videos. But um, for now, just, just to note that this is great for sending note sequences, but it's not really great for sending MIDI CC uh, modulation uh, sequences. Okay, so the other, I would say the other downside of this setup in kind of a practical setup setting is that, you know, currently I have my entire audio signal from the model samples going through the NTS-1 and then out to my recording device. Um, now, if I purely want to use the NTS-1 as an effects box to add global effects to my model samples, then that's great. That's exactly what I would want. Um, but if I'm trying to do what I'm doing here, or I'm, I'm uh, sending a, uh, a synth sequence as well as effects, well, just listen to what happens. Turn everything back on. My point is that it can just be, it can be a little too much. So like all of my, my rhythm tracks, my drum tracks are going through the same effects as my synth tracks. And sometimes that's okay, but usually that you don't want that. Like for example, I love my synth tracks to be just drenched in reverb, but I don't really want my drum tracks to be drenched in reverb because it just kind of gets too muddy. You lose all the punchiness um, and like the glitchiness that I really like. So ideally um, I want different effects on my drum tracks than I do on my synth tracks. And with this particular setup, um, you can't really do that. It's like, it's global effects, it's all or nothing, right? There's no way to separate them out. One workaround for that is just to do this, right? I unplug one of my outputs from the model samples. So now I'm only sending my left channel into 
the NTS1. I take both of my, um, my synth tracks, which are right here, um, and I hard pan them to the left. And then all my drum tracks, I hard pan to the right. And I have a different cable going out from here into my recording device. Now, this is the point where you get into the, the territory that you need a mixer and kind of you need more gear, right? Like my audio recorder, it only has one input, one stereo input. So I could record, you know, my synths on the left channel and my drums on the right channel and have them be separate and then later in a computer I could mix them together but it's like eh, it's kind of kind of annoying <laughs> so probably what you're gonna do is you're gonna have all this go into a mixer and then the mixer output go into your rec recording device and that's gonna give you more flexibility with that so just to point out that um, you you know you may need more gear if you want to separate out your rhythm and your melodic sections um, which chances are you do now one thing I've also done I actually have multiple NTS ones and I can have one NTS-1 processing effects on my synths, plus adding its own synth voice, and I can have a second NTS-1 processing effects on my drums. And in that case, I have two stereo outputs to deal with, and I do probably still need a mixer or something to combine them. But um, it's a pretty nice little setup. Uh, of course, you don't have to have two NTS-1s. It could be two different effects boxes or whatever you want. You know, it's totally up to you. Um, but uh, yeah, just want to point that out. Now, the model samples does also have a headphone output, so one option is to send your full stereo signal to your effects, and then have a separate headphone output uh, to, to record the dry, symbol, uh, the dry signal, right? And then later on in a DAW, you can mix the dry and the wet. That's an option too, if you like that. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that in future firmware, Electron will let, allow us to actually selectively route the audio, right? Because what I want to be able to do is I want to say, I want tracks one through four to go through my headphone jack, and I want tracks five and six to go through my main outs, right? If we had that type of flexibility, then I would have full stereo output from all of my tracks just going into different you know, hardware audio outputs. That would be ideal. That's something that the model samples cannot currently do. And as far as I know, that's something that the more expensive electron boxes also cannot currently do, um, which is annoying. I don't see why. Um, I'm wondering if it has to do with the actual hardware, like the circuitry may not allow for that, right? Maybe it's one common path going to both both the output sets, and in which case, yeah, they can't change that. So let's uh, let's keep messing around with this a bit. So I'm going to, I already have my little sequence going on track five, or sorry, on track six, right? Let's mute everything, all my drum stuff here. So again, here's what I'm hearing. And I'm gonna turn the volume here all the way down. So we're only hearing the NTS-1, okay? Now, check this out. I'll switch to track five. I'm gonna go into my MIDI menus again. I'm gonna go into my out channels, and I'm gonna set track five to also output to MIDI channel 16. So I've got both these tracks are both sending out on MIDI channel 16, both of which um, are going to the NTS-1. And now, same as before, I have to go into my track menu, enable M out. There we go. And now I already have a sequence here too. So let's go ahead and play and just see what happens. Uh, unmute that. And I'm going to also turn down the volume on this, so we're purely hearing the NTS-1 and nothing else. Okay, <laughs> so interesting, right? So what's happening is I'm sending two different sequences to the NTS-1 simultaneously. All right, it's, it's hearing uh, both of them, but the way the model samples does it Whichever is the lower number track has the priority. So if I send two different notes on the same step, whichever is the lower track, in this case track five, that's the note that's actually gonna be sent out to the model samples. And in the way that I set this up, I have my track five playing these long legato notes, right? So each one of these uh, has a really long length, 11.5, uh, 4.5, right? Versus on track six, my notes have very short length, 0 0.125, uh, 0 0.100, you know, stuff like that. So um, in this sense, track five is sending these super long notes and they're overriding whatever shorter notes I have on track six. So I'll hear that again. So um, let's instead turn that one off. So I'm gonna turn my MIDI out off for track five. And then let's find one that has shorter notes. Um, well, that's every note, so with that, let's try this one, track three. Okay, MIDI note, uh, MIDI out on. 
and I will send my out channel on track number three to be MIDI channel 16. And again, I will mute, you know, just turn down the volume on that one and let's see what happens. Ah, note this, this is useful too. Uh, track three right now is muted, so we're not hearing it. And the mute is, again, it's what's doing is it's muting the entire sequencer track, including what it sends out, right? So um, right now we're not hearing anything from this on the NTS-1 because it's muted. So now I unmute it and we'll hear it. Or not. Ah, <laughs> my recorder died. Okay, battery change. So um, we've got a sequence sending from track number six. Um, track number five, we have uh, muted. Track number three now is also going to be sending a sequence out to the NTS-1, and let's hear how that sounds. So what we're hearing is that, you know, in this case, the track three sequence, it's sending the same note every time, and then track six is jumping around between different notes. And um, the NTS-1 is receiving them, right? And the model samples is prioritizing whichever is the lower track number. So in this case, track number three is lower than track number six. And so anytime both these tracks have a note on the same step, it's gonna send track three, all right? Anytime, um, it has, or maybe it's actually sending both notes and the NTS-1 being monophonic can only play the lower of the two notes. I'm actually not sure. So we could plug in a polyphonic synth and test that theory. Um, yeah, let's do that later. But in, in any case, um, it can send, um, you know, you can send from multiple different tracks out to a single device. Um, and that can be kind of cool because you can actually have these different uh, sequences that kind of fight or interplay with each other, um, which I think is, is like a fun and interesting thing to do. Okay, um, I think I want to add actually one more little synth to this setup.